What's up, y'all? So check it. We started this Facebook group for the Condor Approach. If you're not in there already, go get in there. Today I did a live stream with slides about safety, security, vulnerability, and differentiating between them. And I said, you know what? One, I tried to use different slides, so it was a little janky for me. Two, I wanted to bring it to the podcast, but deliver it more clearly. So check out today's episode. I'm going to talk about safety, security, vulnerability. It's a quick shot, less than 15 minutes. Get you in, get you out, get you thinking. Head over to the Facebook group and let me know your biggest takeaway from today or put it in the reviews below. I love y'all with no further ado, going to kick it to the intro and then into the episode. Whether you're a life coach, therapist, biohacker, invested in wellness, or in the healthcare profession, if you have an intention to work in psychedelic spaces, <laughs> you're in the right place then. If you're called, get involved. But first, get informed. Let's talk the four ends, intake, intention, in-space integration, leading to deeper transformations. Psychedelic coach podcast, talk cold, walk you through the process, it's all possible. Leave space for the follow-through. Most importantly, integration is not optional. All right, y'all. So I'm getting back in podcast mode. Well, truthfully, I'm creating a lot of content. So I'm going to use a lot of content for multiple purposes, right? Because that's really what this whole thing is about. And today I wanted to talk a bit about safety. So I just wrapped Alive in the new Facebook group, The Condor Approach, which if you're not in there yet, go join The Condor Approach, Ancient Wisdom Meets Modern Coaching. We're doing live streams. You can see slides. I have downloads that we offer. So it's a great place to come kind of go that layer deeper into a lot of these teachings. And though I liked how the live went, there was a few things I still wanted to iterate or reiterate on the topic of safety. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to just add it to the podcast. So I don't know if I'm going to be doing podcasts three days a week. That's about what it feels like between me and Toss, some of the concepts, all the interviews I'm doing, but that's where it seems to be going. So thanks for hanging in here. (laughs) Today, we're going to talk about safety. So why does safety matter in the psychedelic space? There's obvious reasons of why it matters a lot, but let's start with an example for myself. I was at my first ceremony and I remember sitting on the couch clutching this pillow. And I remember observing myself on the couch in my mind and knowing that I looked really uncomfortable and I could tell the facilitator was paying attention without directly looking at me, but I could still feel it. And it made me really uncomfortable that I could feel him reading my body language or picking up on my energy, whatever it was. So I put the pillow down and tried to look comfortable. But if you've ever tried to look comfortable when you're not comfortable, I don't know if anyone here has seen Ice Age uh, when Sid the Sloth is trying to get comfortable on a big rock. Well, that was me. (laughs) Trying really hard to look comfortable between a rock and a hard place. And so it was the first time I remember observing that I intellectually felt safe. And I was very certain in the decision and everything that led to that moment, the support that I had, the community, one of my dearest friends there. So intellectually, I felt safe, but in my body, I did not feel safe. I wanted to run, freak out, all of it. And so as I go through, just kind of sharing from our context of the Condor approach, the difference between safety and security, and really the difference between honesty and vulnerability is going to be weaved in here a little bit. Because vulnerability can make us feel unsafe, can make you feel unsafe, make me feel unsafe, because it is opening yourself to the possibility of something which might not be safe. So I'm going to keep this pretty concise today. What is safety? Let's start with just a top down breakdown according to the Condor approach. We say that safety is freedom from hurt, harm, loss, deficit, injury, pain, or death. So if at any moment I'm not feeling safe, I go, where's the hurt? Where's the harm? Where's the loss? Where's the deficit? Where's the injury? Where's the pain? Or where's the death? Yes. The importance of safety is everything when it comes to psychedelics, because if you don't feel safe, especially on multiple levels, 
if you are a female-bodied person who has had been attacked by male-bodied people and that's who's conducting the ceremony, your mind might feel safe, your body might not. Or if someone left a religion, is an anti of your religion, then your religious beliefs may not feel safe, which may make it harder for you to access some of the places you want to go because there is putting up a little bit of a block to keep you safe, boundaries to keep you safe. So safety is a present moment thing. And quite often when people say safe or safety, it's this state of being that stays when it, it changes in a moment. I want you to think of having a conversation with a loved one, a parent, and with what they said, you, you suddenly shut down or you wanted to run or you immediately got angry. That is a threat to safety. Anger is a protective mechanism. Why? Because some part of you is not feeling safe. Okay? So the safety is often mistaken as security. So think of social security or the secure, we hire security guards to protect a perimeter so it doesn't get attacked. Security is a future-based thing that when you worry about the future, let's say your bank account or your savings is getting low. Let's say you're reaching the credit limit of a credit card and you don't have any other money coming in. What is threatened is your idea of safety in the future. That is what we call your security. And so when your body, when you sit and have all these thoughts about that future safety, it can make you feel unsafe in the present moment because the body does not know the difference between your future safety and security and now. And so it starts to play it out in the now. Right now, that's why minding your mind and understanding your mindset is so important because if you consume yourself too much of worrying about the past and the potential of it happening in the future, you create a feeling of not being safe in the present moment. So security is the idea of safety in the future. Safety is a present moment somatic physical experience. And the promise of security in the future is not a replacement for the need of safety in the now. Have you ever had someone say, yeah, but it's, it's going to be fine. That doesn't make any difference if you don't feel fine right now. Or if you are someone who is watching the news right now, and you are a uh, family's Palestinian or your family's Jewish and you're hearing the stories, your body might not feel safe even though you're in your home here in the States. Your ideas of the future, but what could that mean for my people? What could that mean for my culture, my religion? And that future security pulls into the now. So what do you do? For us, you have to increase your ability to feel. You have to increase your knowing and your understanding of safety so that you can create moments of safety for yourself or recognize when you're not feeling safe. Because prolonged states of not feeling safe can cause you to be reactive, you can't take action the same way, or you're reactive, often damaging. Or if you go into overwhelm emotionally from all of the fear of or that future security making you feel unsafe now, withdraw from your children, then they're not going to feel safe because emotionally there is loss or emotionally there is deficit, which impacts their safety. Not even including the conversations they're hearing at school or how their friends are acting or their teachers, right? So when you, you get to the nuance of safety, it's one of the most important skills you could have and you have to learn the language of your body in order to understand safety and to know what is an idea of future safety that I'm worrying about? Concern is one thing. When you worry and embody that worry, that is a fear that is really bringing it into the body in the present moment versus an awareness of, I have concern and it's having me think a certain way, but when I'm worried, I'm fixated on it, which can then pump the hormones to make me feel more afraid. So when people come to our live events, here's another example. Um, Julie, one of our master coaches, y if you come to a live event, you'll meet her. She's amazing. She came up to the microphone and just from being put on the, just from being put in the spot, not put on the spot because she chose it, but in her seat, she was feeling, you know, she wanted to get up and use her voice and share. She got up and started to do that. And her body started to react because that was an edge for her. And so in that moment where we're in that reactivity, we have to find places and spaces for us to increase our capacity and show our body it is safe to use our voice. 
regardless of why someone does or doesn't, is irrelevant. If at any point in our life, we were told to be quiet or our voice didn't matter or sit down grown folks are talking or whatever it might be, the second we try to use our voice, some part of our body doesn't feel safe because there is a fear of hurt or harm or deficit. And that could be even a withdrawal of love or approval from people in your life. And so when your voice starts to shake and it's hard to speak, being in an environment where people can hold space with you and wait and don't need you to rush helps your body recalibrate to find safety in sharing your voice. Now, it goes in 50 million other potential directions with that, right? It's merely one example that so many of us have woundings from people and communities that we lived in that truly the only way to heal them is in a community that is there for you. And so if, you know, if you've been thinking about coming to our live events, y'all, I'm going to say it over and over again, you got to come to the Condor Approach. Not only do you get the community and the people around you who are doing incredible things, but it's putting your body in a place where intellectually you know that you're safe. How to communicate with your body in those moments of not feeling safe so that you can increase your capacity to feel, increase your ability to hold more. Right now and with how things are changing with, you know, potentials, well, it is war and genocide and murder and all of the things. If you don't increase your capacity to feel and carry more, think of it like a muscle. If you don't work that muscle, it will collapse under pressure. So it's important to understand that you can develop that skill, you can build that skill, and that will allow you then to stay connected to your kids, to make the contribution that you want in the world, to stay purpose-driven, to really whatever it is that you feel you are destined to do and however you're meant to serve, because if not you, who, right? Now is the time and you're going to have to do that work. The Condor Approach is all for people who know they have to walk the walk and they're looking for a safe place to do that. They're looking for a safe place to come get that emotional workout, those tools so that they can get strong enough to hold space for those around them. You cannot carry your own emotions and the emotions of, of everyone around you. You can build that emotional capacity within yourself to be with everything that comes up, to hold space for yourself, hold space for others because you can never carry it for them. So vulnerability and being open is not just being open to what's happened to you in the past. Quite often people confuse vulnerability and honesty. And we'll do a whole other episode specifically on vulnerability, but vulnerability is being open with possibility. And the possibility might be if I open myself to love, that love could be taken away or that love could leave for whatever reason. And so I don't want to be vulnerable enough to open my heart because of the fear of what could happen. But there's also the possibility of amazing things, of growth, of change, of connection. And so when you start to see the difference between vulnerability and honesty, sharing your traumas and dramas and past experiences, rarely people are doing it from a vulnerable place. They're doing it from an honest place. When something's really vulnerable, you can't get to it right away. It takes time. You have to work with the body. It requires some space holding for both change and growth and also to protect yourself from hurt or harm. So I understand in circles or when I'm on podcasts and someone says, thank you for being vulnerable. I wasn't being vulnerable. It's just a story. That stuff I processed already. There's nothing vulnerable about it. It was honest. So let me know. Let me know in the comments because you can comment here, at least on Spotify, you can. Or come into the Facebook group. Let me know. What is your takeaway from today? DM me on Instagram. What was your takeaway from this conversation around safety, security, and vulnerability? And let me know if you like these quicker episodes, you know, where once a week we'll have an hour show and then maybe microdoses of information throughout the week under 15 minutes. Would love to hear from you. Have a blessed and beautiful day. Make something impactful today, whether it's 16 deep breaths or a hug with someone that you love, now is the time to choose to make it impactful, to increase your capacity or find a place for support so that you can. 
Hope to see you in the Facebook group very soon or at the live event. We're registering now for February. Peace. See you next time. Some things need to be healed in community, and we offer you something unparalleled with the Condor Approach Live. We're going to talk about how to prepare for, navigate, and integrate your psychedelic experiences for yourself or those that you love. These live events are catalysts. They really allow you to uncover and unleash the potential that you already have within you. When you're surrounded by like-minded people who are walking the walk and are committed to the path, you may even find your next facilitator or coach, but this event is designed to foster genuine relationships, give you community that supports and uplifts you, wants to see you win. If you've been wanting to embody this understanding and take these skills to a new level, then a live dynamic environment is just the way. You can go to thecondorapproach.com. That is thecondorapproach.com. And we will see you in February. Integration is not optional.